Welcome to Statics. This video will introduce you to some of the fundamental concepts governing statics. To begin, mechanics is a branch of physical science concerned with the state of rest or motion of bodies subjected to a force. This can be divided further into three branches. Rigid body mechanics, deformable body mechanics, and fluid mechanics. Rigid body mechanics is the focus of this course, as well as the dynamics course which is taught as ME204. The other branches are the focus of courses you may take in the future. This statics course forms a foundation for those future classes. Rigid body mechanics consists of two areas. Statics, which deals with the equilibrium of bodies at rest or moving at a constant speed, and dynamics, which is concerned primarily with bodies in motion. In mechanics, we have four basic quantities that are used. Length. Time. This is used primarily in dynamics. Mass, which is related to weight by a gravitational force. And force. Think of a force as a push or a pull. It has a magnitude, a direction, and a point of application. As we begin our study of statics, it's important to understand some fundamental modeling definitions and assumptions. First, we have a particle. A particle has a mass but no size. Think of modeling the planet Jupiter in its orbit around the Sun as a point. Next we have a rigid body. A rigid body is a combination of a large number of particles which remain fixed after a load is applied. In other words, there is no deformation or bending in a rigid body. Finally, we have a concentrated force where we take a force that is spread over an area and assume that it acts at a single point. So why are the fundamental modeling assumptions for particles, rigid bodies, and concentrated forces important? These assumptions allow a problem that may be very complex to be reduced to a simpler form. We can ignore certain complicating factors, such as material properties and minor deformations that may occur, and focus on the primary aspects of the structure. It is important to briefly review Newton's laws of motion because they form the entire basis for rigid body mechanics. Newton's first law states that a particle originally at rest or moving in a straight line with constant velocity will remain in this state unless the particle is subjected to an unbalanced force. A basic example of this is a book on a table. That book is going to remain there unless somebody comes by and picks it up or knocks it off. Or if I hit a golf ball in outer space, that golf ball is going to continue in a straight line at a constant velocity. Newton's second law of motion deals primarily with particles that are acted upon by an unbalanced force, or in simple terms, particles that experience acceleration. This will be dealt with primarily in dynamics. A simple example of this might be the force that you feel in a car that pushes you back in your seat when you undergo rapid acceleration. Newton's third law of motion states that the mutual forces of action and reaction between two particles are equal, opposite, and collinear. An example of this might be that you push against a rigid wall with a large force. The wall pushes back with the same force to maintain equilibrium. Finally, we have Newton's law of gravitational attraction. This law refers to the attraction between two masses, and that attraction is equal and opposite. The attraction is proportional to the mass of the particles, their radius or distance between the two particles, and the universal constant of gravitation, capital G. Two particles of mass are mutually attracted with equal and opposite forces of magnitude f as given by the equation shown. For most engineering calculations, however, we will use the Earth as one of the masses, and we will assume we are at sea level. With these assumptions, we can simplify the previous equation with a substitution. We will let lowercase g equal the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth squared. It is the radius of the Earth since we are assuming sea level. If we substitute that value into the previous equation, we are left with a much simpler form of force is equal to mass times lowercase g, or weight caused by Earth's gravity equals mass times g.